Yeah, uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Jerry Gasiga. Uh, I'm a lecturer at Universal Kigari. I'm here to take you uh, through a unit in the names of uh, introduction to taxation. Um, that, uh, before I start to teach you introduction to taxation, I'd like to uh, go through the different chapters we are going to cover. We are going to cover almost uh, eight chapters that makes up introduction to taxation and the rest of the uh, chapters will be uh, looked into it uh, during the time of advanced taxation. Uh, uh, this is introduction, introduction to taxation. Introduction to taxation. The first chapter we are going to look at, of course, the introduction, introduction. The second chapter uh, we are going to look at the administrative, administrative uh, tax structure, structure. Uh, the third chapter, we are going to look at the uh, we are going to look at the personal uh, income income tax that is in short called PIT. Uh, the fourth uh, chapter, we are going to look at the we are going to look at the CIT or Corporate, corporate income uh, tax, income tax. In short, it is CIT. The fourth, the fourth chapter we are going to uh, see is uh, tax administration, tax administration, administration, or what they call tax procedures. The, the sixth chapter we are, have to look at here is the, is the VAT or Value Added uh, Tax, in short it is VAT. The next chapter we have to look at here is the Customs Administration. Customs Administration Customs Administration uh, The next chapter we, we are also going to look at here is the uh, micro micro small micro small business micro small business and gaming activities and gaming activities uh, the next chapter the next chapter we are we have to look at here is the withholding taxes with withholding withholding uh, taxes which we mark our last chapter at this level because I'm teaching uh, different unit texts. I'm teaching uh, the I'm teaching different departments like Department of Procurement, Department of Marketing, Department of Accounting, Department of Finance. It's the combined uh, in text and combined uh, departments and combined departments. Start introducing uh, the taxes. Uh, taxes are the most important source of public revenue. Uh, the most important uh, source of public revenue. Uh, where uh, public revenue, where any tax can be defined as an involuntary payment uh, by a taxpayer without involving a direct uh, repayment of goods and services. Uh, in short, uh, it is called uh, quid pro quo. 
as a quid pro quo in a return. So therefore, the taxation is a non quid pro quo. So in other words, there is no direct goods or services are given to the taxpayer in the return of the tax paid. So the taxpayer can, however, enjoy the goods and services provided provided by the government, like any other citizen, without any preference of discrimination. Let's look at uh, the foreign futures that are very common in tax systems. So number, uh, number one feature here we have to look at is the tax, uh, tax authority. Is tax authority. So what is tax authority? So this is, uh, this is the authority with the power to impose taxes or with the power to levy uh, taxes. For instance, the central government or the local authority. So the taxes are received as public levy. So the tax authority has the power to enforce the payment of uh, the taxes. So the number second, the number second feature here we need to look at is the taxpayer. Is the taxpayer. The number second uh, feature here is the taxpayer. So who is the taxpayer? Uh, in short, the taxpayer is the person or the entity that has that pays the tax. Example, you can talk of like uh, individuals, individuals, you can talk of like companies, uh, you can talk of like companies, you can talk of businesses, businesses and the other organization, organizations. And other organizations, uh, so the amount of tax is compulsory, and there is punishment uh, of a failure uh, to pay. So the second uh, feature here we need to look at is the tax itself. Is the tax itself? Of course, the tax is the amount uh, paid to the tax authority as a direct cash payment or paid indirectly through the purchase of goods and services, uh, goods or services. So. Therefore, the tax is not paid for any specific service lended by the tax authority to the taxpayer. So the tax paid becomes a revenue and is used to provide the public goods and services uh, to all citizens. So in addition, the above common features, the above common features, um, or the common features of tax, so I have uh, different definitions of tax by some tax experts, uh, as I'm going to define uh, this tax uh, depending on different experts that elaborated more about it. Uh, I can say that tax uh, is a comparison contribution to the public authority irrespective of the exact amount of the services lended to the taxpayer in return. And uh, in addition to that, it can also be a comparison contribution uh, from a person to the government to defray uh, the expenses incurred in the common interest of all. After explaining uh, these, the, these, uh, these terminologies, I'd like to take you through the, the rationale, to take you through the objectives, to take you through uh, the purpose of taxation. So, uh, the purpose of taxation, or the objectives of the taxation here, uh, the taxation has different objectives. Objectives of taxation, all the purposes, all the pur purposes. So uh, we need to look at number one objective. The driving objective of taxation is revenue uh, raising. Is revenue. is revenue uh, raising this is the revenue uh, raising so uh, the objective of taxation uh, the number one driving objective of taxation is the revenue uh, raising revenue raising uh, the main purpose of imposing taxes the main purpose of levying uh, taxes is to raise the government income or the revenues. 
So taxes are the major sources of government uh, revenue. So the government needs such revenue to maintain uh, the peace and security in the country, to increase social welfare, uh, to compete in development uh, projects uh, like logs, uh, like construction of schools, like uh, construction of hospitals, the power stations, uh, so on and so forth. So number one, second uh, objective here is economic economic uh, stability. The economic stability is the second uh, objective of tax of the taxation. So the taxes here are also imposed to maintain economic stability in the country. So in the theory, during the inflation, the government imposes more taxes in order to discourage the unnecessary expenditure of uh, unnecessary expenditure uh, of the individuals. So on the other hand, the during uh, deflation, the taxes are reduced uh, in order to encourage uh, individuals to spend more money on goods and services. So the increase and the decrease in the taxes helps to check the big the big fluctuations or the big uh, the big the changes in the prices of goods and services, and as thus maintain the economic stability. So the number second. Uh, objectives is protection uh, policy. The protection policy. The protection. The protection. Uh, the protection uh, policy. So where the government uh, has the policy of protecting uh, some industries uh, or commodities produced in the country. Uh, this is like protection of infant industries or protection of uh, local industries. So taxes may be imposed to implement such a policy. Heavy taxes are therefore imposed on commodities imported from other countries which compete with local commodities, thus making them expensive. So the consumers are therefore encouraged to buy the locally produced and low priced goods and services. You can, uh, you can talk of like the initiative of uh, Made in Rwanda. So this Made in Rwanda, at least, has reduced the number of imported goods which are already uh, been uh, produced uh, uh, locally. So therefore, the local, the, the people or the citizens are now consuming the made in Rwanda products because the country has tried its best so that it can protect the importation of uh, the importation of uh, foreign commodities. So uh, the fourth objective here we can talk of is social welfare. Is social uh, welfare the social welfare? So some commodities here, such as uh, wine, such as alcoholic drinks, such as tobacco, such as uh, cigarettes, etc., are harmful to human health. Of course, so by discouraging wide consumption of these harmful commodities, so taxes are imposed to make the commodities more expensive and therefore out of reach as many people as possible. Uh, the fourth, uh, the, the fourth, uh, the fifth objective here we can say is fair, is fair distribution, is fair distribution of of income. So why do we have to come up with fair distribution uh, of income, fair distribution of income? Because there is a bigger gap of haves and have-nots. The people who have the wealth or who have the income and the people who don't have any income. So there is a gap in between there. There is income inequality there. So now the taxes have, uh, the tax authority has to come up with some measures so that it can bridge the gap that is existing between the haves and the have nots. So therefore, it can fairly distribute that kind of income that exists. So in any country, some people will be rich and the others will be poor due to limited opportunities and numerous, uh, uh, numerous constraints or numerous hindrances uh, to becoming heritable, uh, to becoming uh, wealthy. So taxes can be imposed which aim to achieve equality in distribution of national income. So the rich are taxed at the higher rate, uh, the higher rate and the amounts obtained are spent on the increasing the welfare of the poor. So that way, the taxes help to achieve a fair distribution of income in the country. So, uh, what uh, what else can we uh, what 
uh, objective can we talk about here as well? We can talk of allocation of resources. Allocation. The allocation of resources. The allocation of resources here we can talk of like the taxes can be used to achieve the reasonable allocation of resources in the country for optimum utilization of uh, those resources. So the amounts collected from the taxes are used to subsidize or finance more productive projects ignored by private uh, investors. So the government uh, may also remove taxes on some industries uh, or impose lower rates on the taxes to encourage uh, the allocation of resources in that direction. Uh, the, number, the following uh, objective, which is the number last but not the least, is increase in employment. Increase in employment. Employment. Increase in employment. So how does the employment opportunities increase when it comes for the objections of uh, taxation? So of course, uh, the funds collected from the taxes can be used on the public works program or on the public uh, 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 public amenities such as lots, uh, drainages and the other public buildings. So if money or labor is used to complete these amenities or to complete these programs, more employment opportunities are created. We have uh, finished the objectives of the succession, the objectives of taxation. Let's look at now uh, what they call the canons, uh, the canons of taxation or the principles of taxation. So these principles or these canons uh, were brought forward by senior economists uh, called in the names of Adam Smith, uh, who is uh, a senior economist who have come up with different books like the books of uh, the books of uh, wealth of nations. Uh, 19, uh, 1776. Uh, this is one of the popular books of Adam Smith. So this Adam Smith uh, came up with different, uh, uh, different, different uh, guidelines or different principles or different uh, canons, uh, different canons of taxation. Adam Smith. With his book, uh, Wealth of the Nation. So, uh, without taking too much time by delaying on this, I'll uh, break or delighted uh, to go through the different canons, canons of taxation, different canons of taxation. Number one canon is simplicity. Simplicity. The second canon, uh, the second canon uh, can be the can be the tax, uh, can be the the economy. Uh, we can talk of uh, we can talk of uh, uh, administrative efficiency, administrative. Uh, efficiency. Uh, we can talk of the neutrality. Uh, we can talk of the. We can talk of another canon uh, in the names of saturnity. Satan. Saturnity. We can talk of canon like uh, mm, like equity. We can talk of a canon like productivity. We can talk of uh, a canon like uh, uh, a canon like a canon like diversity. can talk of a canon like coordination
coordination. He can talk of a canon like flexibility, flexibility, to mention but a few. So these are most of the canons the Adam Smith came up with. Um, by starting, by starting from the simplicity, uh, starting uh, from the canon of simplicity or the principle of simplicity, here the tax system should be simple. From word simple, because the tax system should be simple, should be simple uh, enough to enable the taxpayers to understand uh, the tax and be able to compute his or her tax liability. So a complex and difficult to understand the tax system may produce a low yield as it may discourage the taxpayer's willingness uh, to declare the income. So what does it imply? It implies that it may also create the uh, administrative difficulties leading to inefficiencies. So the most simple tax system is where there is a single tax. However, this may not be uh, adequate as some people will not uh, pay the tax because it's not good to uh, depend on the single tax system, but it's good to depend on the multiple tax system as we are going to look at as we are moving ahead. Uh, the second, the second canon here, the canon, the canon of the economy. Uh, here, the canon of economy, uh, the canon of economy, it is says that the cost of uh, administering, the cost of administering, administering the tax. The tax should be greater, uh, should be lesser than the uh, should be lesser than the benefits being collected uh, from the taxes. That is that is uh, in the brief. It's like CBA, CBA analysis, which is cost benefit analysis, where we want uh, the cost to be lesser than where we want the costs to be lesser than the benefits. This is uh, what uh, this principle talks about. So how about administrative efficiency? Administrative efficiency uh, Administrative efficiency it uh, means that the good tax system should be capable of being administered, being administered uh, efficiently so the system should produce the highest possible yield at the lowest possible cost both the tax authorities and the tax uh, and the taxpayer. So therefore, the tax the tax system uh, should ensure that the greatest possible proportion of taxes collected accrue to the government as revenue. How about the canon the canon of neutrality? The canon of neutrality here, or we talk of neutrality as the measure of the extent to which uh, the tax avoid distorting. The workings of the market mechanisms so it should produce the minimum substitution effects so the allocation of goods and services in the free market economy is achieved uh, through the uh, price mechanisms so therefore a neutral tax system should not affect the taxpayers uh, choice of goods or services to be consumed so uh, that is what i can talk of um, this kind of neutrality how about the canon of saturnity? The canon of saturnity here, uh, saturnity, uh, the tax should be formulated so that the taxpayers are certain on how much they have to pay, uh, how much they have to pay and uh, when do they have to pay. And the tax should not be arbitrary, uh, shouldn't uh, be arbitrary. So the government should have the reasonable certainty uh, about the attainment of objectives. Of the tax, so the yield and extent to which it can be uh, evaded, uh, there should be the ledger available information if the taxpayers need it. So therefore, the certainty is essential in tax planning. Certainty is very, very uh, a paramount, uh, a paramount uh, principle in the objectives of, uh, I mean, in the canons of the taxation. Uh, this because it involves the, the appraising or. Uh, evaluating different business or investment opportunities uh, on the basis of the possible tax implications. So it is also important 
uh, in designing, it is also important in designing remuneration packages. So employers seek to offer the most tax efficient remuneration packages, which wouldn't be possible if an uncertainty exists. How about the uh, the how about the canon of the canon of convenience? Uh, the one I forgot to factor in. The canon of convenience here. The canon of convenience. Uh, the canon of convenience here. Convenience comes from the word convenient, feeling convenient of what you have to pay. So the convenient, the, the, the method and the frequency of payment should be convenient to the taxpayer. Uh, for instance, the payee, which is pay as you earn tax, so this may discourage tax evasion. So for example, it may be difficult for many taxpayers to make uh, a lump sum uh, payment of the tax at the year end. For such taxes, the evasion ratio is quite high. Uh, let's talk about the canon of equity. The canon of equity. Equity uh, uh, can give us the equitability of the tax or the social justice uh, of a tax system. So a good tax system should be based on the ability to pay. So equity is about how uh, the burden of the tax is distributed. So the tax system should be arranged so as a result in the minimum possible sacrifice. So through progressive taxation here, uh, those with high incomes uh, pay a large amount of the tax as well as a larger proportion of their income as a tax. So therefore, the equity means people in similar circumstances uh, should be given similar treatment. So that, is, uh, that gives us the horizontal equity. And the dissimilar treatment for people in the similar circumstances uh, gives us uh, the vertical equity. So therefore, uh, as our last canon, we can say that, as, as one of the major canon here, we can say that there are three alternative principles that may be applied in the equitable distribution of uh, tax burden. Well, which, uh, what are these principles? What are these uh, theories? We can talk of like, um, we can talk of like um, uh, different approaches. We can, uh, under the equity, we can talk of like the benefit, the, the benefit approach, the benefit approach. Uh, we can talk of like um, the ability to pay approach. We can talk of like the the cost of service, the cost of service, the cost of uh, service uh, principle or approach, the cost of principle or approach. Uh, let's look at the equity in detail. The equity, as I've said, that it has given us different theories like the ability to pay approach, like uh, the cost, uh, the, 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 like, uh, uh, the ability to pay approach, it has also given us uh, the benefit approach, it has also given us the cost of a service approach. Let's look at the tax theories. This tax theories has given us what they call the capitalist, the capitalist, capitalist school, school of thought. Uh, here it has given us the the social, the socialist uh, school of thought. Where we have under capital capitalists uh, school of thought, we say that um, those who pay taxes should enjoy should enjoy the lion's share, the lion's uh, share. 
Uh, how about the socialist uh, school of thought? Uh, how about the socialist uh, school of thought? This one says that those who pay taxes and those who who don't pay taxes should enjoy the benefits the benefits of uh, of taxes the benefits of taxes is that right yeah uh, let's continue from uh, uh, from here after getting uh, the capitalist school of thought and socialist school of thought this uh, capitalist school of thought uh, brings brings the benefit the benefit approach so this benefit approach uh, says that individuals are expected to pay according uh, to the benefit they get from there uh, according to the benefit they get so therefore this one brings the ability uh, to pay ability to pay approach so this ability to pay approach says that an individual should pay according to his or her ability so uh, that um, gives us the recap of the benefits uh, of the benefit approach and the ability uh, to pay approach so how about the cost of service uh, the cost of service principle uh, the cost of service principle here it says that uh, the cost of service principle uh, says that the cost to the authority of the service lender to individual taxpayers the tax is the payment for which there is no quid pro quo of course as, as I've said before that the taxation is a non quid pro quo so between the tax authority and the taxpayer so therefore the taxpayer doesn't necessarily have to receive goods and the services equivalent to the tax paid so therefore for this reason the principle cannot be applied uh, in relation to the service lender out of the proceeds uh, of the taxes uh, for, uh, for example the judiciary, the defense rather it may be applied for such services as postal, electricity, water supply where the price of these services are fixed according to this principle uh, i.e. The, uh, the, 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 